2,000 years ago. Amen? Come out of the precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. He that knew no sin became sin yeah. for us. Yeah. Ooh, and I'm thankful to God that he became sin for me. Amen? Yeah. I was a wretch undone. What about you? Amen. I was on my way to hell. What about you? Yeah. But the blood of Jesus. Amen? Listen, I am thankful that we're now living under the dispensation of grace. Say grace. grace. What grace simply means is when I sin, many times God doesn't kill me right then. Because the Bible says for the wages or payment of what sin is, death. But, say but, the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ. Have to say only through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus Christ. So the dispensation of grace, don't get it twisted, don't get it mixed up. It is here to what? Give us time to accept Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The grace gives us time to repent. Say repent. Repent. But we must follow the principles in the word of God. Say repentance. Amen. We must follow those principles in order to be restored back in 100% fellowship. Listen, the Bible doesn't say if you sin. The Bible says when do you sin. Mm. Help me say when you sin. Mm. You have an advocate, right? Yeah. Hey, Amen. Say an advocate. You got somebody that's pleading your case yeah. in heaven. Somebody holler, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Look at your name and say, the blood still works. The blood still works. Come on, works. say it in your spirit. The blood of Jesus still works. The blood of Jesus still works. He's saving generation after generation after generation after generation. The blood of Jesus. Amen? Listen, I have Pastor Chip Davis of NC's Season Ministries located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida. Where we offer you refreshing impartation of God's word. Now let's get into the word. We're talking tonight from this one word, idolatry. Mm -hmm. Idolatry. So I looked up the word idolatry in the dictionary. Here's what it says. The religious worship of idols. Can we say the religious <laughs> worship <laughs> of idols? Idols. So you got to be careful about the religious folk. Amen? Amen. See, the re religion is not only uh, what singled out for godly people. So I say you can be a religious idol worshiper. Idol. Am I talking? Uh -huh. So you be careful. Say be careful. be careful. So then I looked up the word idol. Capital I D O L in the dictionary. It simply means an image of a deity other than God. Mm, say an image yeah. of a deity other than God. Capital G, capital O, capital D. Capital D. Have to say God Almighty. God the Father. Amen. You have to say you're worshiping or you have somebody or something that you care about more than you care about God. That individual or those individuals or that thing or those things now becomes an idol. And God does not appreciate idols. Amen? Amen. Neither does he appreciate idol worshipers. Another definition of the word idol is the deity itself. Now let me explain that. Not only is the image of a deity can be what? An idol. But help me say that individual that you worship more than God. Ah. Are you listening? Ah. That individual becomes your idol. Uh -huh. That thing you worship more than God. That thing becomes what? An idol. Now be careful. Say be careful. Be careful. See there, there's some folk that want you to love them so much that they want you to love them out of the will of God. Amen. Amen. And then, help me say then, Amen. that individual becomes your idol. Help me say that's a danger zone. Somebody say run. 
and don't look back. Am I talking? So we got to be careful. Another definition of the word idol is any person, or oh, there it is, or thing regarded with blind admiration, blind adoration, or blind devotion. Say, oh my. Oh, that becomes your idol. Are you listening? I, I say to the men, we got to work. I say to the women, let the men work. Amen. Amen. Don't be want to call them every minute. Call me every five minutes. No. The man needs to what? Work. Work. Amen. Listen, there was a time we didn't have cell phones. Y'all probably don't remember that. There was a time we even had beepers. Y'all probably don't, y'all don't even know. Y'all remember the beepers? There were times, there were times. I remember when I got my beeper, I felt so good. It would just go off, I'd look at the number, but you know what I had to do? I had to pull over, help me say pull over. I had to find a pay phone. <laughs> y'all probably don't remember those days. <laughs> But well, heaven say God has brought us a long way. God has brought us a long way. So we've got to understand that even in this modern day time, we still have to understand that the rules of God have not changed. Amen. 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 The Bible lets us know that he is still a jealous God. Amen. The word of God declares, but thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Say, oh my. oh my. So one of the names, I know you, you want to say God is good, God is merciful, God is loving, God is kind, God is our Savior. But one of his names is Jealous. Let me say God is a jealous God. You don't want anything or anybody put in his place. Times when perhaps, say, um, there were mothers who couldn't have children for a long time, and all of a sudden, God blessed them with a child or children. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, now that parent is what? Idolizing the child. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Don't want nobody to touch them. Are you hearing me? They want them all under them all the time. They say, that's not good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Lord giveth. And the what? The Lord taken away. Bless be the name of the Lord. In other words, when God gives, that's a blessing. But when God takes away, it's still a blessing. Heaven say God does everything good. He is a righteous God. Many things in my life I have not understood the plan of God. But listen, it does not negate who God is. Amen. And say and. I cannot get an attitude when God does what he does because he's sovereign. Right. Say sovereign. sovereign. That means he answers to no one. Yeah. He answers to no thing. Amen. Yeah. He is God all by himself. In a class yeah. all by himself. And we worship him. Yeah. Matter of fact, we are not even angels. The Bible said he has made us a little lower than an angel. So don't try and put yourself in the realm of an angel. Never say you're not an angel yet. You're just human. Now are you listening? Flesh and what? Blood. Listen, the Bible talks about one angel that was so huge that he had a, a, what, a blade in his hand. He was getting ready to wipe out a whole nation with one sway. Look at the neighbor and say, you can't do that. But an angel can. There's going to be a time when the angel going to step what, one foot on the earth, all right, and, and one foot on the ocean and say, time going to what, wrap up, and time that has been will not be anymore. Yeah. But get your neighbor, they don't fool yourself. Don't fool You're not an angel. You're yeah. just human. Yeah. Amen? We yeah. might be able to get to that status one day. Say one day. One day. But we are not there yet. Can you shout, yes, Lord? I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Let me say about excited. About understanding that I cannot put anything or anybody in the place of God. Yes, Lord. Let me say, I can't do it. Say it again, I can't do it. Watch this. I can't even love anybody more than I love God. 
I, I don't know, but listen, when I, when I met Pastor Bridget, I, I looked at her, I said, wow. I think I understood how Adam felt. Amen. Yes. But guess what? I cannot love Pastor Bridget more than I love God. Amen. Because then, help me say then, she becomes what? An idol. Say that's dangerous. Say it again, that's dangerous. So we have to keep it all in perspective. Amen. How about this? I can't even talk to her more than I talk to God. Ooh, sometimes we don't even have a conversation with God until we get in trouble. Hmm? And we say two words. Y'all ready for these two words? Oh, Lord. Say, oh, Lord. Now, are you hearing me? But God wants to be personal. Amen. He wants to be our personal savior. Amen. How about this? He wants to be closer to you than your cell phone. Uh -oh. Woo. Say, oh, my. Ask me why. Y'all know good and well if y'all leave the house. And you realize you don't have your cell phone what you gonna do turn around, turn around. am i talking yeah. let me say go back and get it what about the lord how many times have we just walked out of the will of god and didn't even what feel the effects help me say god wants to be personal, god wants to be personal. he wants to be the love of our life yeah. amen Listen, because he controls our very next breath. Are you listening? You, you do know that man cannot make air, right? Amen. Help me say God is our provider. He's our what? Jehovah Jireh. Amen. And he provides. And for that reason, we've got to get rid of all the idols. Say all the idols. There are times when you walk in people's house. A lot of times, I've, you know, uh, at a, a college that I went to, um, the founder, you know, had a, a, a love of elephants. And all around the campus, there were these statues of elephants. Are you listening? Don't you let no elephant take your praise. Amen? Ele elephant is powerful, but God made the elephant. Am I talking? So I serve a God that made everything and everybody. Can you shout, yes, Lord? So we've got to keep it all in perspective. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to be reading from the King James, and Pastor Bridget will be reading from the Living Bible. Again, the, the book of Leviticus, and I ask you to write these scriptures down. We're talking about idolatry tonight. The Bible says in verse 1, Leviticus chapter 19, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verses 1 and 2 from the Living Bible. Listen at this word. The Lord also told Moses to tell the people of Israel... You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. You must respect your mothers and fathers and obey my Sabbath law, for I am the Lord your God. Help me say must. In other words, there is no exceptions and we can't come along now and change the rules. Amen. God is a holy God. And he expects his people to what? Walk in a ram of holiness. Yes. Help me say no exceptions. no exceptions. There's a scripture that says follow peace with all men. Watch this. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm sorry you once saved, always saved folk. You're lying to people. Need to get it right. Amen. In other words, when you come in the realm of Christ, you're going to have to what? Live holy. And when we sin, say when we sin, we're going to have to practice repentance to restore us back in favor of God. If you live like hell, if you die in a hellish state, you're going to hell. Amen. 
Listen, baptism don't make you saved and holy forever. You still got to live right. Help me say live right. My bishop, the late L.T. Weaver Sr. said these words. If you want to follow God, just simply turn right and go straight. <laughs> Help me say turn right and go straight. Amen. God is a holy God. Can you say yes, Lord? Verse 3, the Bible says, Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Verse 4, here we are. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourself molden gods. I am the Lord your God. Pastor Bridget, verse 3 and 4 from the Living Bible. Do not make or worship idols, for I am Jehovah your God. Help me say, don't do it. Don't do it. Is this word not plain? Help me say, the Bible said, here's a scripture. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That means that this Bible is written and is not going to change. Now, we try and change it. But when we do that, that means that according to the word, we have added something to it. And God, and that helped me say, God forbids that. And some of us have what? Taken something away. Help me say, God forbids that. This word is settled. Amen. This is the word that we're going to be judged by. So this is the word and this is the way we have to live. Help me say no idolatry. Amen. Say it again. No idolatry. Let's go a little deeper. Second Kings chapter 17 beginning at verse 9. Second Kings chapter 17 beginning at verse 9. Here's what the Bible says. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. Pastor Bridget verse 9 from the Living Bible. The people of Israel had also secretly done many things that were wrong. And they had built altars to other gods throughout the land. Doesn't that sound like some of us? I know it sounds like me. Thinking that God doesn't see what I'm doing. Thinking that God doesn't know my thoughts. Are you listening? Help me say those secret sins. Listen, we must understand that there is nothing secret from God there is nothing hidden from God amen have you ever been uh, with someone and you found out that later on they were much different from what you thought they were have you ever been lied on what am I talking have you ever found out something that wasn't true and somebody was just hey listen it happens say it happens and listen, we're not the generation that started this thing. Way back. Say way back. way back. The children of Israel was doing what? Secret things. Are y'all listening? Don't y'all love this word? The word lets us know that the same devil that was back then is the same devil now. Getting us to do the same things that the children of Israel did. Now what we have to do is learn from the children of Israel. So that we won't have to be punished. Amen. Amen. For doing wrong. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say you can't hide. Amen. Say it again. You can't hide. You ever heard, heard this saying? What is done in the dark. Will come to light. Amen. There's another saying that they had. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Help me say that's a lie. Because if you behind the closed door. You know. And if there's somebody back there, they know, and you know you can't keep God out of any place, so he knows. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Don't fool yourself. Verse 10, watch this. The Bible says, and they set them up images and groves in every high hill Woo. and under every green tree. Say, oh, my. 
verse 11, the Bible says, And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. To provoke the Lord to anger. To what? Provoke the Lord to anger. Every time we try and do secret stuff that we think God doesn't see. Every time we try and make idols that we think God don't know about and burn incense that we think God is not aware of our motives. The Bible says we are simply provoking him to what? Be angry. And you don't want to cross an angry God. Can you shout yes Lord? So we've got to what? Clean it up. Say clean it up. Say it again. Clean it up. Can you shout thank you Lord? Verse 12, the Bible says, for they served idols. Mm. For they what? Served. served idols. Whereof the Lord hath said unto them, ye shall not do this thing. Disobedience. How many times have your earthly mother and or father punished you for what? Doing bad things. Amen. What do you think about God? See many times we have hidden things from our parents. Am I right? Sometimes we say I'm going to take that to the grave with me. But help me say God know it. Amen. If it's something wrong you better what? Confess your faults. Am I talking? To the one that's able. Say able. Amen. To forgive us of how many sins? All of our sins. And cleanse us. Can you shout Glory. How many want to be clean before the Lord? Amen. Amen. The Bible says what? We need to what? Present ourselves. Woo. Amen. Amen. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. In other words, can, let me help you. Let me help you. Listen. Serving God should not be an arduous task. You need to love the Lord. You need to cater to him because he catered to you. You need to love him because he loved you first. He's your maker. He's your creator. He gave you life. He sustained your life. He kept you through danger seen and unseen. You need to fall in love with Jesus. He's the one that died on the cross. Am I talking? Help me say fall in love with Jesus. Listen, there's no greater love that you should have than the love between you and Jesus. Get to know him. Talk to him. Fellowship with him. Ah, he's able to do exceeding and abundantly up above all that you can even ask or think. Oh my God. He knows what we need even before we get to the need. And he is our provider. He doesn't want you to turn into darkness. He doesn't want you to turn into dark things and start looking at the thing instead of the creator. We not, must understand that we need to keep it right. Help me say, keep it 100. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Can you shout, thank you? Can you shout, glory? He's warning us that he's not playing and he's not going to accept anything other than what his word says. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. My brother, my sister, let this word saturate your spirit. Yes, and if there are dark places in your life, it's time to move towards the light. Yes, and there's only one way. Yes, there's only one truth. Yes, and that's Jesus Christ. Yes, he is the way. Yes, he is the only way. Yes, huh. I have no doubt that my mother and my father loved me. I have no doubt about that. But you know what? No one loves you more than Jesus. I have no doubt that my mother or my father would fight for me ah, if I'm doing right. But no one can fight better than Jesus. He wins. 
every battle he wins. Ah, uh, he is the light of the world. He is the savior of the world. He is my strength, my God, in whom I trust. Ah, uh, God, Jehovah. Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. He loves us. And this is why he sent his word. There's a scripture that says he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from destruction. Help me say the word comes for us to take inventory of our life, inventory of our lifestyle. And if we find that we are what? Out of balance with the word of God, he's giving us time right now to get it right. Somebody holler, use this time to glorify God. Can you shout, thank you, Lord. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 25 Pastor Bridget if you would from the King James read that starting at verse 25 When thou shalt beget children and children's children and ye shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves mm and make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. Verse 26, continue reading. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day. Oh my. That ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land Whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Read there. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Look at neighbor say, God's not planned. God See, some of us, God has allowed us to have children. And then God has allowed us to live to see our grandchildren. And then many of us, as we've gotten older, we have fallen out of favor with God. And started depending on things and people. Yeah. Started depending on Bobo who we just left. We don't want to get married because we've been in a marriage all these years. And that person died. Now we don't want to, we don't want to marry. We just want to date. Are y'all hearing me? Help me say you better be careful. God is saying even when you get old, he still wants you to serve him. Yeah. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yeah. Don't let nobody pull you away at the end. Am I talking? Don't let nothing pull you out of the what? The will of God at the end. Help me say stay faithful. Because anytime at any age that you walk out of the will of God, now you're provoking him. Uh, and there's going to come a time where he can show. Can you shout yes, Lord? There'll come a time what? That he can what? Shorten your days. Simply because you walked out of his will. Yes. Help me say learn, learn from the children of Israel. Amen? Amen. Not to provoke the Lord your God. Uh, Can you shout thank you, Jesus? thank you Jesus? Let's go a little deeper. Deuteronomy chapter 5 beginning at verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 5 beginning at verse 8. Here's what the Bible says. Thou shalt not make any graven image. Look at your neighbor and say, don't take your time and start making it. It's a process. Are you listening? See, see, we start it and then God doesn't do anything. Then we keep on. And God doesn't do anything. And then we keep on. And then all of a sudden, the, the devil will start telling you, don't worry about it. God know. God know what you need. God know you need a boyfriend. God know you need a sugar daddy. Hello? Help me say, oh no. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Help me say, God is my supplier. God is my source. They had a song out. I didn't write the song. Can you pay my bills? Can you pay my telephone bill? Help me say, no. Get your job yourself, amen? Pay your own bills. Can I talk? Can you shout, yes, Lord? 
See, a lot of times when you depend on people to do things for you, they're going to expect things from you. Hello? Help me say, be careful. You know what my prayer is? Lord, keep me healthy. Lord, keep me with a sound mind. I, I want to make sound decisions. I want to know what I'm doing. This is why I have never smoked. I have never drank alcoholic beverages. I want to be of sound mind. I want to know that the decision, watch this, even if it was wrong, I still wanted to be able to what? Say I made a wrong decision. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? I don't want to be tricked. Are you listening? Listen, you can pray prayers to God. You can talk to him. Amen? And tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. Am I talking? We have not because we ask not. And the Bible said even sometimes when you ask, you ask amiss. Meaning you ask God for something and you don't even believe that you're going to get what you ask. But the Bible says when ye pray, believe that ye receive and you shall have it. Somebody holler, I have what I say. Say it again, I have what I say. Because we serve a God that's more than enough. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Ooh, so God is saying, look, he don't even want you to make any graven image. Are you listening? Yes. Or say, or, or any likeness of anything that is what? In heaven or above. Heaven said, don't even do anything that you know that God's not going to approve of. Amen. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes. Pastor Bridget, if you will, verse 8 from the living Bible. Never make idols. Ooh. Don't worship images, mm. whether of birds, animals, or fish. Tell me, say, don't do it. Listen, God made the birds, but we're not to worship them. That's right. God made the animals, am I right? Yeah. And what? He gave Adam a job to what? Name all the animals. Amen? Yeah. Tell me, say, God made the fish, made but he don't want us to worship anything. No living creature. Are you listening? There's no one greater than our God. Help me say no idolatry. None whatsoever. Can you shout yes Lord? Verse 9. Listen the Bible says. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. Woo. Nor serve them. For I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. Mm-hmm. All right, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Listen, there was a time there was a young man in the Bible by the name of Haman. You ever heard of that name? Yeah. Haman. Mm -hmm. He wanted to kill all the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a queen by the name of Esther. Am I right? And she had, what, a relative by the name of Mordecai. Am I right? And God gave Esther favor, but she was a Jew. Help me say a Jew. And Haman, am I talking? And Haman wanted all the Jews destroyed. And listen, you need to understand that you need people around you that can inform you of what's really going on and how it will affect you if you don't, what, do what is right before God. The Bible said Mordecai had a talk with Esther. And even though she was the queen, help me say the queen, she was going to what? Be killed with all of the other Jews. Are you listening? And Mordecai, help me say Mordecai, a godly man, told Esther, listen, you need to go to the king. You need to what? Go to the king. And I can remember these words very profound. What? Here, here's what Esther said. If I perish, I perish. Woo. In other words, you couldn't just walk up to the king back in those days. Even the wife had to what? Be invited. And Esther was actually risking her life to go to the king. Even though what? He was her husband. Are you listening? 
Now you must understand that the Bible says when the whole plan of Esther and Mordecai came what to full value, the Bible says what the king found out that Haman was going to what kill all the Jews, and that meant that he was going to kill Esther. Am I right? Now watch this. Haman went to Esther and was trying to explain to her and trying to get her forgiveness. And then when the king walked in, are you listening? It looked like Haman was trying to take advantage of his wife. Yeah. Am I talking? Y'all yeah. think I'm making this up, don't you? And listen, the king, what, had Haman, I want you to hear this, and all of his sons put to death. Help me say, not just Haman, but his whole family line was wiped out because, help me say, because he tried to plot against the plan of God. There was a play back in the day, I didn't write it, but it said, your arms are too short to box with God. Look at your neighbor and say, you better recognize that God is not playing. Yeah. Woo! You know, you know, it's really sad. But sometimes there, we can just even look back in generations and see that there was hatefulness back in when our grandparents were living, great great, great parents. Are y'all hearing me? Help us say sometimes there's a bitter a seed, amen. That passed through generation after generation. But look at the neighbor and say, it stops now. I can't, I can't get anybody to profess it. Help me say, it stops now. Say it again, it stops now. As for me and my house, ah, we going to serve the Lord. Help me say, it stops now. Y'all have heard of generation curses, right? Even though now, you know, God doesn't really hold us accountable what our fathers did because we have to accept Jesus Christ. But there are some things, say some things, that we can really trace back. Am I talking? In other words, uh, your daddy was an alcoholic. Am I talking? His daddy was an alcoholic. Uh, some things we know. And what? His daddy's daddy was an alcoholic. Help me say it stops now. Somebody holler, it stops now. It's time to write new history. Help me say it stops now. Somebody holler the blood of Jesus. Cleanses everything. Ah, everything that's in me. You know, you know what? There, 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 there are some children that it is sad, but because their parents were drug addicts, then they came here as what? Dependent on drugs. Help me say, but God can cure you of that. Can you shout yes, Lord? Can he do it? Will he do it? Yes, he will. Put your trust in God. Can you shout? Thank you, Lord. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14. Are you getting anything out of this? Help me say, no idolatry. Don't worship any idols. Amen. It's forbidden. Are you listening? Don't even associate with people that do it. Are you listening? Amen. And even, say and even. Amen. I'm going to add this, superstitions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, some people, if they crack a mirror, talk about seven years bad luck. I say that the mirror had the bad luck, amen? Because now it's got to be replaced. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Talk about black cats, right? Walking under ladders and all of this crazy stuff. Look at the neighbor and say, get rid of the superstitions. Just simply trust God. We walk by what? Faith. And am I talking to anybody? And what? Not by sight. Help me say God is able to do anything except fail. There is no failure in God. Put your trust in God. Man will fail you. Uh, am I right? Brand new cars will fail you. Am I right? Put your trust in God. Jobs will fail, won't they? Put your trust in God. Am I right? Can you shout yes, Lord? 
there even comes a time that you have money in the bank and you can't even get it. Am I talking? I remember, y'all, y'all, y'all better listen to this testimony. I went to the bank with my ATM card and I had $19.95 in my account. I couldn't get anything. Ask me why. Because the minimum was $20. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes you can have money in the bank and still can't get <laughs> can you shout yes Lord put your trust in God amen and keep at least $20 and one cent in the bank <laughs> can you shout yes Lord amen the book of Jeremiah chapter 14 beginning at verse 22 Here's what the Bible says. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Question mark. Or can the heavens give showers? Question mark. Art not thou he, O Lord our God? Therefore, we will wait upon thee for thou hast made all these things can you shout thank you lord pastor bridget if you would verse 22 from the living bible listen at this what heathen god can give us rain <laughs> who but you alone O lord our god can do such things as this therefore we will wait for you to help us. Help me say, I'm going to wait on the Lord. Uh, your idol can't send rain. Your idol can't make rain. Your heathen God can't do it. Help me say, I'm going to wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Help me say, wait on the Lord. Say it again. I will wait on the Lord. I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined my ear. Help me say, wait on the Lord. Uh, be of good courage. Don't faint in the day of adversity. Uh, the Bible says, he that faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Help me say, wait on the Lord. In other words, fortify yourself. You might have to dig in. Am I talking? It might take a minute for God to move. But listen, when you pray uh, and you are in his will, won't he hear your prayer? Won't he answer your prayer? Help me say, dig in and wait on the Lord. Say it again. Dig in and wait on the Lord. Phew. Wait on him. Wait on it. You need rain? Don't go to the Indian reservation. Help me say, uh-uh. I'm going to call on the Lord. Am I talking? Uh, you need help? Help me say, call on the Lord. The Bible says he's a present help. <laughs> In the time of trouble. Help me say, my God. I waited, what, patiently on him. He brought me out of the muck and the mire. Woo. He brought me out of a horrible pit. Am I speaking the word? Help me say he what? He put my feet on what? A solid foundation. And he established my going. Help me say wait on the Lord. Can you shout yes Lord? Get rid of all of the items. Now some of you might have to go through your house. Yeah. Those candles you've been burning. Mm-hmm. Listen, listen, ain't, there's really nothing wrong with burning a candle, but if you have the wrong motive behind it. Are you listening? It's time to get rid of it. Help me say get rid of it. And it's going to be in your house looking at you and, and talking about, I, I hope you don't see me. I hope you don't see me. Help me say, I see you and I'm going to get rid of you. It's time to what? Clean house. Can you shout yes, Lord? Winter, spring. Help me say spring cleaning. It's time to what? Clean house. Can you shout yes, Lord? Give the devil back. How many of his tools? 
all. Say all. all. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Now, I, I know many of you by now are probably saying, wow, this is all Old Testament. And even though the Old Testament is good, here's what I say to people. Just because the Bible called it Old Testament and New Testament, it doesn't mean that the old is insignificant. Listen. Thank you, Pastor Bridget. Pastor Bridget says all scripture is given by what? Inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen? So don't think of the old as being what? Washed away. Because there is some great word and what? Great revelation, amen, and great experiences in the Old Testament. So I say to you, many times you just, you just, listen, you have to think, okay, this is just book one and book two. Am I talking? But help me say, all of it is God breathed and all of it is God approved. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? The book of Acts chapter 15 says some of you said, well, he just, you know, stayed in the Old Testament. Well, let's go in the New Testament. Acts chapter 15, verse 20. Acts chapter 15, verse 20. Here's what the Bible says. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols comma and from fornication comma and from things strangled comma and from blood Woo. can you shout that's heavy say it again that's heavy pastor read if you would verse 20 from the living bible listen at this except that we should write to them to refrain from eating meat sacrificed to idols. Okay. Continue. From all fornication. Okay. And also from eating unbled meat. Unbled meat. strangled animal. See, back in, in that day and time, and probably it's happening today, when you strangle an animal, the blood doesn't come out. It stays in there. So they cook the animal with the blood still what? In there. And the Bible says no. Say no. Y'all do know what fornication means, right? That means any type of sexual activity with someone that you are not legally married to. And marriage is according to God's standards. A male that was born, a male that has a prostate. A female that was born a female that has fallopian, fallopian tubes and what? Vagina. Hello? Uh -huh. Am I talking? Yeah. Am I talking? Uh -huh. Is it clear to you? Yeah. They can be married. And say and. Yeah. You need to be careful who you partner with. Amen? Because God doesn't want us to be what? Unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So the person that you partner with, first of all, you have to have a love for God and your mate has to have what? A love for God. The two becomes what? One. Amen? That's the God approved marriage. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes. If you're not that way, it's considered fornication. Even if the laws of the land say that a woman and a woman can marry and a man and a man can marry, God doesn't approve that. So that's still fornication in his eyesight. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. And it's punishable. Are you listening? Eternity in hell. Because you didn't do it God's way. Listen, you need to read Romans chapter 1. If you think I'm lying, read it. Read it. Study it. It brings it out very clear. Women leave the natural use of themselves. Huh? And burn for another woman. That's ungodly. Amen? Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Listen, I didn't make the rules, but I'm going to be judged by them. Can you shout yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. So I might as well stop playing games and do it God's way. 
God, the Bible says, for as, as of the Lord, his way is perfect. Amen? My thoughts, my desires, not perfect, but the way of God is perfect. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. One last scripture and we'll be finished. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 21. 1 John, that's towards the end of the Bible. 1 John, chapter 5, verse 21. Y'all ready for this? Here's what the Bible says. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. <laughs> Help me say simple. simple. Plain. But to the point. Let me read it again from the King James. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Amen. So I want to end tonight by saying this. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Amen, Amen means what? I agree. I agree. Clap your hands and give God glory. So people of God, the world has a standard. The world has its way. Yeah. And sometimes the world is in compliance with the word of God. And sometimes the world is not. We have to choose a side. We have to stay in the will of God. We have to be just like Esther. If I perish, I perish. In other words, I'm going to do the right thing. If it cost me my life, I died doing what? The right thing. The God-approved thing. And that's what God wants. Amen? Amen? The Bible declares, if you are faithful until when? Death. Okay? Then you'll receive what? The crown of life. But some of us start out in church. i a musician. I played for hundreds of funerals. And every now and then I, I read on the obituary, he came to God at an early age. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And? <laughs> but he or she was killed robbing a bank. Hello? Running from the police. Shooting someone. Hello? Just because you come to God at what? An early age, God wants you to what? Live holy. Amen? It's not enough just to come. You're going to have to stay in his will. Amen? Hey, you're going to have to what? Leave the things of the world behind and have a mindset to please God. No idols. Say no idols. No one can come between you and God. There are times when people say, hey, what are you doing? Well, I got Bible study tonight. Hey, why don't you just go off with me? Okay. No. Help me say no. Bible study means what? Bible study and you need to what? Be in. Am I talking? Yes. Bible study. Hello, mama. I, you know, my friends say, um, I go spend the weekend with her. Are they going to church? No, you can't go. Amen. Ask me why. Because church is more important. Yes. Say, oh my. See, our parents need to develop the backbones again. Am I talking? See, many of us just want to get, oh, go on. Yeah, go on. Get rid of, get rid of the children. No. God is holding you accountable to what? Bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. The fear of God. Bring them up. Amen? So that when they're old, they what? Won't depart. Listen, you had the child, you had the children, it's time to raise them now. Amen? I know it says it takes the village to raise the child, but some people really, really believe that. Huh? I think that it starts where? At home. Because sometimes when these young folk get to elementary school, they so jacked up. Uh, hello? Yeah. They so out of the will of God. And, and many of them are just, what, repeating what they see at home. Yeah, we say never good. So God is calling us to holiness. Amen? Amen? He's calling us to get rid of all of the idols. Anything or anybody 
that you care about more than you care about God becomes your idol. And God does not appreciate that. So the first step is to accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Say after me, Lord, Lord I am a sinner. I, am a sinner. I, acknowledge I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. Clean me up. I want to live for you. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. I give myself to you. Amen. Simple prayer. But a powerful prayer to the believer. The Bible says you must what? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you must believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Then you shall be saved. Now, for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your Savior, I say welcome to the family of God. Amen. The Bible says heaven rejoice. Well, if heaven rejoice, then I can rejoice too. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Amen? Amen. Now here's what I found, that even in the house of God, there can be corruption. Even in the house of God, there can be preachers that are not living right. Even in the house of God, there can be ministers that are not living right. Even in the house of God, there can be deacons and missionaries that are not what? Living right. Watch this. Even in the house of God, there can be members that are not living right. So you have to be cautious. So here's what I suggest. Study the word. Study to find the standard of God. And if anybody doesn't come up with that standard, then they are potential idol and they are not living right and do not follow after them. Amen. The word of God is truth. The word of God is what? Truth. The word of God is absolute truth. So here's what I ask of you. Two things. First of all, you got to get into this word. Start reading the word. The good part about it, there are times even that you can just allow the Bible to minister to you because a lot of the Bibles now are audio. Am I right? You just turn them on while you're cooking. Am I right? And the word can just what minister to you. Amen. There should be no excuse. Even if you can't read and write, you can listen. Amen. Help me say no excuse. Can you shout? Yes, Lord. So get into that word. If you don't know where to start, I suggest that you start in the book of Proverbs that corresponds with the day of the month. Listen, I'd say, for example, if this was the first of the month, just read Proverbs chapter 1. It's good reading in there. Just read it every day, every month, every year. That's a good start. Second thing, I'm asking that you find a Bible-based, Bible-believing, Bible teaching church that teaches the word line upon line, precept upon precept, teach the word with understanding, join that ministry so that you can grow. Amen. Amen. If you do that, those two things, God's going to get the glory out of your life. The third thing I ask is remember that just because you came to Christ today, anytime you sin, you fall out of fellowship of God. You must practice repentance. Repentance, say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up, things I said, things I did that was not pleasing to you. Lord, forgive me, restore me back to 100% fellowship in you. And we must practice repentance every day. Amen? Amen? All through the day so that God can get the glory. And if we what are called, we want to be called in his will. Not what? To be called out of his will. For the wages of sin is death. death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Chips Davis of N Season Ministries, located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard, the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida, where we offer you a refreshing impartation of God's word. 
And we say to you these two words that we pretty much say every day. Be blessed.